Hello everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today we'll be talking about identity and access management. This is a continuation series of AWS and if you haven't checked my earlier videos, please check out which is in my channel. Before I start the tutorial, I'm a blogger and I write my blog at techieandtravel.com and if you like my contents, please like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel as well. So today we'll be talking about identity and access management. So let's start with the overview. In this tutorial, we'll talk about IAM concepts, IAM users and groups, and how to create the user and group, IAM policies, how to use policy generator to create your custom policies and attach them to specific roles. Identity and access management provides fine-grained access control across all of the AWS. With IAM, you can specify who can access, which specific service or resources, and under which conditions. Let's talk about IAM users and groups. IAM users, they are individuals like us that log in with email or password combination together with the multi-factor authentication and use AWS command line interface and access keys. So users can have set of permissions in IAM that will allow them to do certain specific things in AWS. IAM groups, they are a collection of users that each share a permission policy. This is mainly helpful to standardize the permission among a group of people in an organization rather than managing permission for each individual person. Roles are a flexible concept and they are similar to AWS users, but they can allow permissions to be granted to AWS users or AWS resources themselves. An IAM role can be assumed by IAM user accounts or by the services within AWS. And then there are policies. Policies are what defines what users, groups, or roles can do. And they are a JSON object we'll see how policies looks like in a JSON format in a bit. Now, let's see how these all concepts interact. Let's imagine we have a group of users. Those users are placed in groups that offers them certain permissions so that we can give a specific permission to only specific needed users. For example, you have certain set of developers as a user you can create a developer group and only assign them the permissions that a developer would need. Each groups will have then policies that are appropriate to those users. Each IAM policy is a JSON object and has few elements. So now, how roles fit into this? As we know, roles are a flexible concept and they allow certain permissions to be granted to any specific users or the AWS resources themselves. Let's say you have a Lambda function that requires full access to the DynamoDB and other resources. You can create a role with full DynamoDB access and then attach them to the Lambda function so that it can access to all AWS resources. That's how roles comes into play. Now let's look at the concept that we learned and work in the management console. Here I'm in the management console. If I click into the services and under the security, identity and compliance, I have IAM. On the left, you see you have user groups, user, roles, and policies section. So for instance, I wanna create a user, then I click on the user section and click on add users, and then create a custom username. For the testing purpose, I'll create a test username, and then click on the AWS console management access. You have the option to choose the programmatic access for the users that are trying to reach the AWS resources through the command line interface or the SDKs. For the testing purpose, I'm gonna choose the regular AWS management console access. So I'm gonna submit a custom password and then hit next. Over here, you have the option to create a group. Let me create a group and add user to the group. So let me create a group called test group and create the group. You see, we have a new group created called test group and we added user to the group. 
let me click on the create user so you see a test user is created if you go to the IAM dashboard now you can see that under the user section you have a test user and under the user group section you have a test group one way to secure your user account in AWS is to enable multi-factor authentication if you click on IAM and click on users you see we created a test user but we haven't enabled any multi-factor authentication in it so let's go ahead and secure it with multi-factor authentication if you click on security credentials you see it does not have a assigned MFA device so let's assign a multi-factor authentication device to it if you click on manage you see you can use a virtual MFA device, U2F security key, or any hardware that provides a multi-factor authentication. So for this purpose, we are selecting the virtual MFA device. This can be a Google Authenticator app that you can have in your mobile. Click on continue, show the QR code, and from your mobile downloaded Google Authenticator app, scan the QR code. Once you scan the QR code in your Google Authenticator app, it will provide you the MFA code. You need to provide the MFA code twice. Wait for the second MFA code to appear on your app. Now click on Assign MFA. Here you have successfully assigned the virtual MFA and next time you try to sign in with the IAM user test and its password, you will have to enter the code from the multi-factor authentication device. So this adds another layer of security to your user account. And it's recommended that you create a multi-factor authentication for every user account in AWS to add an additional layer of security. Now we discussed about the policies. So you can attach these policies to any groups or any roles. For instance, you have a test group and you want to attach a policy saying, I want these groups to have the ability to migrate the database instances. So how do you create that policies? Let's see that. If you click on policies, you see multiple policies that are already provided by the AWS. You click on create policies then you see you have a JSON tag where you can submit the JSON details. So in order to create a custom policy, you can use the AWS policy generator. Here you can select the type of policy. I'll choose IAM policy and this specific AWS service, I chose it to allow the users to migrate the database so let me select the database migration service and over here you can choose the actions selective actions for now i'll choose all actions and all resources click on add statement as you see the effect is to allow database migration service to all resources and no under no conditions so generate the policy you can copy this generated policy and attached into the AWS policy. Now that you attach the policy, go to the review and give the policy name. So TempDB migration is what I named it and I'll create a policy. Now you see the TempDB migration has been created. If you click on the TempDB migration, you will see the JSON policy. So now you created that policy called TempDB migration you can attach this policy to any groups or any roles. So let's see how to create a group and attach this policy. You click on the group, you click on create group, you provide a meaningful name to the group. Let's say we call it temp db. And then attach a policy. We already created a policy, so we are going to attach a temp db migration policy to the group. 
we create a group. Now you see the TimDB group is created. Now let's make use of roles and policies. Now let's say you have a Lambda function that requires access to the backend database. You create a role and you attach policies to it. You create a role to allow Lambda function to access the backend database. I'll choose Lambda and click on Next. So over here, I can either create my own policy or use the existing policies that AWS provides. So let's make use of the AWS provided policies. I can type in database and see the existing database policies. Let me attach this policy for the testing purpose and add a new key as policy and as a temp. This role is to allow access to the backend database. Temp and you create a role. So under the role section, we see a tempdb access role that we created for the Lambda service. Now you can attach this role to the Lambda function so that it can talk to the backend database. So this is it on IAM identity and access management, and we will cover furthermore AWS services in the upcoming tutorial. So keep following my YouTube channel for further videos on AWS, Docker containers and hot technology topics like Bitcoin or blockchain technologies. Stay tuned.